Hello investors, my name is Mike. I'm an average investor sharing my investment journey on the internet. In today's video, we'll discuss my dividend portfolio in my Roth IRA, as well as the major changes that I have done to this portfolio. Total portfolio value is $23,681.65. You can see my total gain is $5,664.99. Um, of that gain, $4,859.34 is market gain, and $805 is from $805.65 is from dividend payments. Looking at this graph, you know, we have our ebbs and flows, and over the long run, over the last three years that I have been investing in this portfolio, it has been consistently going up. There have been times where, you know, the market has crashed, there's been some massive dips, but the key about dividend investing is about investing for the long haul and letting those uh, dividends compound. I used to have 10 slices in my portfolio here. I currently only have nine. And the reason being is I used to own a utility sector over here and I equally weighted everything. And I came to the realization that with the way I want to structure my portfolio, I wanted to have a higher emphasis on growth and I used to own Next Era Energy. I used to own Brookfield Renewable. And I decided that I wanted to uh, get out of those positions and get rid of them because um, I believe that I would get a much higher dividend yield just investing in uh, dividend growth companies than investing in those companies. And there's a couple other factors I got rid of the utility sector is utility sectors, they have a lot of debt and not a lot of potential to grow. So like I want to own a company that has a high potential to grow in terms of share price value, as well as increasing their dividend, increasing their cash flow, and having a low amount of debt. That is like my main goal. And I just feel like the utility sector like goes against those, like that thought process. Um, so going over to my funding, um, I've been investing in this portfolio for three years now, $6,000 each year. For this year, 2021, I'm fully funded, which is allowing my uh, dividends to compound faster. If I was having an approach where I was investing like $115 every week, dollar cost averaging, you know, I wouldn't allow my the shares to get uh, pay out more dividends. So I try whenever I can every single year. My goal is to max out my Roth IRA because like once you purchase those shares, it allows the dividends to get, you know, you own the shares before the dividend date. So then you get paid out all of the quarterly payments. Um, just going through my holdings. These are all my holdings. Um, my biggest position is this QYLD. This is a covered call um, ETF where this company, uh, Global X, they pretty much sell covered calls on the NASDAQ 100 which is very similar to the strategy that I implement myself. Um, for my option strategy, I actually invest in Tesla and I just sell covered calls on my Tesla holdings. And then Disney, Johnson, Johnson, JP Morgan, Visa, Avalon Bay, this is a res residential REIT, Home Depot, Walmart, Equinix, this is a data center REIT, Procter & Gamble, Prologis, Industrial, Microsoft, Intel, Apple, Waste Management, 3M, Vail, Mining Company, Mining ETF, Honeywell, Qualcomm, Lockheed Martin, and two other mining companies. So pretty much this is my entire portfolio. Since I've been investing for three years now, pretty much the majority of my portfolio is in the green besides Intel. And I believe, I think QYL, oh no, it finally turned positive. I only have one holding that's in the red over here. And the reason being is um, Intel is having some issues with uh, there's a chip shortage because of, like the pandemic and they um, had to delay a couple of their chips, their development pipeline and um, investors didn't like that. And they pretty much have been reflecting that dislike or disdain in the share price. I believe Intel is a company that is undervalued. It pays a consistent dividend. And I think people are sleeping on Intel and especially going forward with the uh, semiconductor shortage, like they're going to be in a prime position to increase over time. Um, and if you guys look through my portfolio, a lot of these are high quality companies, Disney, Johnson, Johnson, JP Morgan, Visa, Home Depot, Walmart, Intel, Microsoft, Apple, Waste Management. These are all very solid companies that 
throughout the next 10, 20, 30 years, I believe will be staying around with us um, and increasing their revenues and producing better and better products. You know, when investing, you really should be knowing what you own. I'm going to go back to my portfolio. You really should be knowing what you own. And if you don't know what you own, then how can you have a conviction towards it? Um, I created a video about having a um, concentrated portfolio with uh, what Warren both Buffett believes on diversification. Uh, you guys could definitely check out that video. But for example, like I, I broken down all my sectors into I broken down all the stocks that I own into different sectors. Um, for example, like let's look at my healthcare. In my healthcare sector, I only own one stock, and that's Johnson Johnson. I have come to the realization that the majority of the gain in the stock market is from the best companies, and the best companies are have great management, great cash flow, great product pipelines are are the ones that are going to win. I believe Johnson Johnson is in a prime position to continually succeed moving forward. Their product pipelines are incredible. I happen to work in the healthcare field and I just feel the way that Johnson Johnson does business in healthcare is going to sustain them going forward, whether you know we turn into a one payer healthcare system or we maintain the same system. A lot of their products, they, they uh, develop Tylenol, Motrin, they develop Benadryl. These are a lot of products that are used consistently and recurrently. Um, it's not like, you know, people are going to get sick and, you know, they're going to want to feel better when they feel sick and they, they have product pipelines that, that address these situations. And I used to own Avi, I used to own Stryker at some point, I used to own some of these companies, but I just believe that I would rather own one quality company in this sector than owning four that I'm not too excited about. Um, Johnson Johnson's fundamentals are fantastic. You really cannot go wrong with Johnson Johnson. And I would just rather own one great company than owning a whole bunch of a bunch of them. Now, if you look at my information technology sector, I own four of them. Okay. When building my portfolio, I've been trying to, um, I used to own a hundred stocks totally in this portfolio. And the reason I started initially owning 400 stocks in this portfolio, or excuse me, 100 stocks in this portfolio is because what I did, I um, I went through, I want to be a dividend investor. So I looked through all the dividend ETFs, DGRO, SCHD. I looked at, S, I've looked at pretty much all of them, VYM. And I wanted to to, to mimic what they were doing. And I, I've noticed that the majority of the holdings in each sector, like the top 10, are the same companies in each one of these. They all have very similar fundamentals. And so then what I decided, I actually would own 10 stocks in every single sector. So residential real estates, I would own 10. In this sector, I would own 10. And I, I came to the conclusion that I would rather have quality over quantity. And quality is the most important factor. Like, why am I going to own 10 stocks when I know that three or four of them are really going to get me a return and their management is in line with my values, that their cash flows are increasing. Like, why would I put myself in a situation where, like, I'm banking on the number 10 company to make money? I mean, diversification is great when you have an immense amount of wealth, but since I'm, <laughs> I don't have that much money, I need to be more diligent in growing, growing my account and growing my stocks. So in this slice, I own four. I've decided that out of the nine sectors that I own, I don't want to own more than four stocks in each sector because I believe if you're owning more than that, like you're, you're losing on quality. Um, like Microsoft, top ranked company, like you can't really go wrong with them. Same with Apple. You know, people have been talking about Apple and that, you know what, they've made all the money in the world. Like what's next? Like they're, they're, they're going to stop producing more and more revenue, but they've proved the analysts wrong year over year for years. They've been talking about you know, Apple running out of steam 10 years ago, but you know what? Apple is still finding ways to make money. They have so much money that they can try out different markets that will allow them to get money. And Apple could be a company that also tries to develop an electrical vehicle. And the reason they would want to do that is pretty much Apple has already saturated their market when it comes to, um, comes to phones, tablets, personal computers, things like that. And, you know, they're, they're, increasing their their cash flows by uh, providing subscription based services with you know paying for storage for for the um i i pay for apple storage like 2.99 so i can store all my photos and videos that i take on my phone they're having um 
music services, they're having TV services. So the next area that has the highest potential to make money is actually electric vehicles, and which is why I own Tesla stock, but I don't want to go there because that's more for my growth portfolio. But Apple has been proving the critics wrongs for years, and this is still a top-ranked company. And then Qualcomm pretty much produces semiconductors for telephones, and this is a prime position to own as well. Like if I had to pick between getting rid of any of these three, I think my first would be Qualcomm because I think Intel will recover and it's going to be one of those contrarian plays that will pay off in the future. And then too, like, you know, so let's let's talk about the financial sectors real quick here. You know, I talked about limiting the amount of holdings I have. And for example, for this financial sector, I know a lot of people are talking about investing in cryptocurrencies and things like that, but I don't believe cryptocurrencies are a great way to build wealth. Is once once cryptocurrencies have all the coins have been mined, it's just gonna trade like a normal currency. Like right now in the infancy stages, yeah, it's yeah, you're gonna there's a potential to make a lot of money, but then like once a lot of these companies ad adopt a lot of these companies and governments adopt this type of payment system, they're just going to they're just going to stabilize the price and it's not going to fluctuate as high as it is now. Um, but kind of building on the crypto thing, what Visa is doing, which is a one of the best like digital transfer companies in the world, is you know they're trying to position themselves where they have um, a credit card that allows them allows you to use uh, Bitcoin. And you know, like wh why would someone want to invest in crypto when you could invest in a company like Visa where they've already have they could kind of like dabble their toes in both worlds like you know like the u.s dollar as well as like using cryptocurrencies and they're trying to position their themselves in a way to utilize the the cryptocurrency run but then also continue doing the services that they do and then you look at jp morgan jp morgan is one of the top u.s banks they have hundreds of billion dollars on their balance sheet uh, in case things happen so this is like one of the best companies you can own in terms of financials because they have a fortress of a balance sheet um, that's pretty much it for discussing that. One of the most exciting things about dividend investing is the dividends. So let's go over to the spreadsheet. In the spreadsheet, I have like my monthly dividend income that I track on this wonderful graph over here. Okay, as you can tell, in January 2020 is when I started tracking my monthly income, and as time has gone on, it has been increasing very so lovely. Uh, total amount invested into this account is eighteen thousand dollars. So with eighteen thousand dollars, these are the oh, actually probably around here. These are the numbers that I've been attaining with that much invested. I didn't have eighteen thousand dollars here, but by the time like May hit, that's when I really started having the fully maxed out Roth IRA in this dividend account. So one of my keys here with the dividend investing is I don't necessarily care too much about price appreciation. I care about that passive income stream increasing as the years go on. And the beauty about me owning this in a Roth IRA is if I'm getting like half a million dollars a year in dividends, I'm not going to be getting taxed on that because it's in a Roth IRA. So ideally, that's the goal. I don't think I'm going to make that much in dividends, but that is kind of the thing. And also discussing in June, I hit my first $100 month which was like one of the most exciting times. Like I was so excited that my all my dividends accounted for over $100 paid out to me. Um, but then for the month of July, I got $43 here. And the keys here as well is that like, for example, last in 2020, July was $27.08. Now for this year, it was $43.78. Let's compare Junes. Junes of last year was $45.88. And then June of 2021, $112.12. This is a solid difference. It almost increased well over 50%. Same thing with like March. Like if you look at March, well, March was kind of similar, $51. But you can see that, you know, year over year, these numbers are going up. So like, so what's, what's another one? Let's do May. May, $12.18, $15.98. So you have it increasing year over year. And this is a beautiful thing. I'm kind of curious what my total number will be at the end of the year. But I just wanted to show you guys my portfolio update on how this portfolio is doing. I made a little bit of changes. I got rid of that utility sector. And then when I got rid of that utility sector, I 
I got rid of that utility sector and my highest uh, holding percentage here is this income one where that covered call ETF is, is making me my money. So like if you look at the QILD, like their yield is 10 to 12%, their expense ratio is 0.6. So you're pretty much getting 11% return just on the dividends. And if you look at the stock price, I mean, like there's a couple times where the stock price has dipped drastically. So it's like dipped and for a good amount of time, I've been just sitting there stagnant. But then even though the, the price is dipped, like we're still, if you think about it, like I'm still getting paid out that money and over time, it's gonna surpass that. I'm gonna buy more shares and then it will compound. And then just kind of going over like the percentages and stuff. When I go over here to my passive income portfolio, it gives us what the return would be. So like if I invested my money in this portfolio for five years, I would have 140% return. I own 23 holdings, dividend yield 2.878%, expense ratio 0 0.09. So it's kind of, I would consider that 0.1. So if you subtract 0.1 from this one, dividend yield would be like 2.7. So 2.7 dividend yield with a solid price appreciation. This is very good. So this is pretty much my dividend portfolio. I'm always an avid proponent about transparency. Like I never want to be telling you guys to do anything that I wouldn't personally do myself. So I'm always a huge proponent about comparing your accounts to other people's, which is why I kind of love the YouTube thing is because more and more people have been transparent with their money. And that is just kind of always really nice to check in with your progress and check in with other people's progress just to make sure that everyone is on the same path. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Um, I hope you all have a great day.